Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, I am here. I'm on camera. That's great. I've actually been a little sick this past week. Uh, even our scheduled recording of the podcast, I canceled it uh, because I had like flu-like symptoms. I've been. I, I just haven't been feeling good. Hopefully, I'm looking all right today. Uh, today is the best I've felt in a while. Still have some sniffles. Took some medicine. Whatever. We're dealing, uh, and we're dealing because Astral Chain uh, came out yesterday. Now. By all accounts, it's a pretty fantastic game. I think it has an 87 currently on Metacritic. Uh, and ultimately, it's a game that I plan to pick up in the future. Uh, for those who don't know, I did uh, sell my Nintendo Switch. Uh, not because I wanted to, uh, but because after I had my heart attack, I had a lot of financial uh, problems cropping up. And I basically had to sell anything I could uh, to cover my bills. And unfortunately, that meant my Switch was a casualty. Don't worry. Where can I get a new job, going to get a new Switch, all that stuff. Uh, that will be all taken care of before the end of the year. Uh, and what's nice about the new Switch is I'll get that better battery life Switch. You know I'm getting that better battery life Switch. Uh, and we'll be rocking later and playing Astral Chain and all the other great, amazing Switch games that come out the rest of this year. But here's the thing. The Astral Chain uh, Metacritic rating in particular has user scores. Now, user ratings and user scores are not new. They exist everywhere. Amazon, GameStop, uh, the PlayStation Network Store, the Xbox Store. User reviews and user ratings exist everywhere. And I have been told and force-fed by many fans over the years that you should trust user scores and user reviews over uh, the more traditional media critics, the more uh, IGNs and GameSpots of the world. And the reason we're being told this is often because a lot of gamers have this perception that these companies are shills, that they are paid reviews. Now, paid reviews do exist. In fact, right here on YouTube is actually one of the worst culprits of paid reviews because when paid reviews happen on YouTube, they're not often disclosed, which is actually against the law and there have been many companies and youtubers caught over time right here on youtube doing that thing accepting not just a free copy of the game but an actual payment to review that game which obviously is going to skew that review especially if it's not disclosed in fact in my personal opinion if a company is paying you you should not call your video a review because if you cannot uh objectively I don't even see objectively because I don't think reviews are objective, but I don't think you could fairly review a product if you're receiving a paycheck from the company, uh, knowingly receiving a paycheck from the company uh, for that game. Like, you know, if a company has an ad running on my video, I don't, we don't control that. But if, you know, we know we received a, a paycheck directly from that company uh, or a representative of that company, then you shouldn't review the game. And this has been a major issue on YouTube, and I don't go out of my way to call people out for it uh, unless it's going to be someone within my circle. And as far as I'm aware, other YouTubers related to me that you guys might be aware of, whether it's Spawn Wave or Player Essence, Supermodel Dave, none of us have, have, have been paid to do reviews. Uh, so I don't think that is something. And personally for me, uh, it's not, I, go, I go even further than that. Um, there's been games in the past that I've had sponsorships for, and I won't review those games. I don't review a lot of games anyways, but if I am going to review a game, it's not going to be one I ever received a paycheck for in any possible way. Uh, so if I got you know paid to do a live stream with something, or I got an ad spot, you know, like a 30-second ad spot on my video or something, I'm not going to review it. And I bring all this up because the trust between you guys and these uh, YouTubers seems to be stronger than the trust between you guys and an IGN or Kotaku, where there's actually less and less real cases of them being paid for their reviews. I'm not going to say it's never happened, but the amount of times they've actually been caught and busted and, and all that is actually in the single digits in comparison to the dozens and dozens of YouTubers that have been guilty of doing this multiple times over the last 10 years. So it, it's interesting because I'm not even going to say you should trust YouTuber reviews more than you should trust IGN. You should trust uh, you know, me more than you should trust you know, GameSpot or something. What I am going to say is I think that critical reviews and aggregate sites like OpenCritic and Metacritic, that the actual professionals are probably the better to trust uh, if you're just looking to get a general view of the landscape of a game, not on an individual basis, but if you just want a general landscape of, hey, is this game good, uh, then user reviews. And we're going to get into why. 
Astral Chain's obviously at the center of this, but uh, I've been dealing with user reviews of products and games and, and a whole bunch of things for years. And uh, I often, you know, when I buy something specifically off Amazon, I'm always looking at the user reviews because uh, I want it to be four and a half stars, you know, rated or better. Uh, and I want most of the user reviews to be positive. But if you go down into the actual review section on Amazon, uh, I'm not going to show you it right now. Uh, it can be a bit of a cesspool. Uh, there could be people who didn't even buy the product. Uh, there could be, uh, this happens a lot on Amazon. This is kind of one of those unsaid things on Amazon. Uh, people are paid to write reviews on Amazon um, to give a product positive. I get emails every single day, some from companies that I have bought products from in the past um, saying, hey, look, we'll give you 20 bucks if you go put a positive review of our product. On Amazon, I've refused every time, even though I need money. Because, uh, in fact, oftentimes, if it's a company I've bought a product from, I just will blacklist them and never buy a product from them again. Because I don't believe you should pay for reviews. Um, I understand encouraging me. Like, you want to send me a reminder email, hey, do you enjoy our product? Why not go leave a review? I don't think that's shady. Uh, but if you're offering monetary compensation, I think that is. And that's littered all over Amazon. Uh, and Metacritic is interesting because it allows user reviews. Um, and Metacritic doesn't really have a way to confirm whether you bought the game or not. Uh, at least on Amazon, you can kind of filter reviews. Um, it doesn't affect the overall rating <laughs> for you, unfortunately. But you can filter the individual rules between, like, confirm, like, hey, they bought this through Amazon. Uh, and then people who, who didn't maybe buy it through Amazon who claim they bought it. But you can't confirm if they did. Uh, Metacritic has no way to know if someone bought a game because they are not a retailer. Um... But what I find interesting about it is review bombing. But more than review bombing, uh, it's also the polar opposite. The amount of positive reviews a product can get, uh, which may not be warranted. Uh, basically, I don't think user reviews are reliable. I don't think they've ever been reliable. It doesn't mean you as a consumer you know, couldn't go purchase Astral Chain and leave uh, an actual real good feedback on a place like Metacritic. That does exist. But I think there's too much going all over the place, heck, even on Steam, uh, where this happens to be uh, not actually informative to me as a consumer. Uh, first, let's talk about review bombing. So for those who don't know what review bombing is, uh, review bombing is basically where a big group of people get together to lower the user rated score on a product for one reason or another that's often not related to whether or not that product is deserving of said rating. That, re that reason's often political, uh, that reason is also social, that reason's often fanboyish, uh, that reason could be a, a billion things. You know, you find out that, say, ex-developer of some game uh, sexually harass someone. Oh, we need to go in the thousands and review bomb their games on Steam. Uh, that is something that has happened over and over again, and I think is disingenuous to the game because that person wasn't the only person that worked on that game, and I think it's unfair to hold one person, even if it was the founder of the company, even if it's the lead creative or lead producer or lead director of the game, I still, still think it is not okay to do that because there are other people who made that game whose mouths deserve to be fed and uh i don't think that's what user review rating should be for you can be you can have social movements against someone without having to go in and use a system that's intended to tell people if the game is good or not uh to voice your displeasure um there's obviously fanboy reasons you know uh, we see this a lot as nintendo gamers uh, where a game comes exclusively to a platform and you get a ton and ton of hate. Uh, now, Bayonetta 2 is often cited as an example of this, uh, but just remember getting a lot of hate from PlayStation and Xbox fans when it was announced as a Switch exclusive, which was understandable at the time because Bayonetta wasn't on Nintendo's platforms, but it was on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. So it didn't make a lot of sense for it to not be on those platforms until we obviously found out later that without Nintendo, Bayonetta 2 would have never existed. Sega didn't pick up the rights to, uh, to make it anymore. They didn't want to fund it anymore. Uh, and nobody else came along to fund it. Honestly, it was Nintendo or nothing. Bayonetta would have just died as a standalone game game and there's probably some gamers out there so salty about it still to this day that even with Bayonetta 3 coming uh they maybe wish that the franchise ended at one because they'd rather see that than see it on Nintendo those are more haters I don't really take their opinions that seriously but those are the kind of people that review bomb games and 
That stuff sucks. And I hate it. I hate it for political reasons. I hate it for social reasons. I hate it for fanboy reasons. Astral Chain, the latest game from Platinum Games, that is one of the top rated, one of the top five rated games to release on uh, Switch this year, has fallen victim to review bombing. Let's uh, check it out now because there honestly isn't a lot of user reviews out there for this game. I checked Amazon and GameStop and a whole bunch of places and there's like zero re user reviews. Uh, so we basically have Metacritic as the only place where user reviews are happening right now. And uh, wow. As you can see here, we have 58 critic reviews being counted on here for a total score of 87. I think Open Critic's right around the same rating. Open Critic doesn't do the weighted system that... Uh, Metacritic does, for those who don't know, Metacritic has, uh, they weight specific reviewers as having um, more say than others. Uh, so even if you get counted in this 58 critics, your review might not be worth as much as IGN uh, for this overall rating. But bottom line is it's all positives. Um, I think there was, and it shows it right here, they had 56 positive reviews, two mixed, zero negative. So nobody thinks it's a bad game from the critics. That's really all you need to see. Uh, but you go over here, and this doesn't even look that bad right here, right? 365 positive ratings, 7 mixed, 21 negative. Uh, but the thing about the user review area is that it's not about uh, what was said because you don't need to say anything to leave a review. You could just click a rating and leave it at that. And for that, there's been much more. In fact, there is 1,149 user ratings. And... Uh, Somewhere it, it used to tell me how many of them were negative. There was like 300 negative or something uh, at the time of uh, post this, which is still only th like about 30% of the, the scores, but it's put it down to a 7.0. When you see a discrepancy from an 87 to a 7.0, that usually signifies uh, review bombing. It, it, you know, anything that's all, that, that, that shows that big of a discrepancy, that's generally review bombing. And I mentioned, um, you know, Bayonetta 2. This is why I don't think Bayonetta 2 is really review bombed because you look at this. You know, there's only 317 ratings. So, by the way, a lot more ratings on Astral Chain than, uh, than Bayonetta 2. Uh, and it's listed as a Metacritic Plus play. And it's got a user score of 8.5 to 92. That's not review bombing. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, it's got zero negative written reviews. To me, that's not uh, that's not review bombing. But Astral Chain was review bombed. Uh, and you can tell that by some of the ratings. So, let's just go into the 393 uh, user reviews and, and just read uh, some of the so there we go now we got a better idea so 353 negative 798 positive 12 mixed uh, the mixed ones I, I personally I feel are people that actually play the game uh, some of the positive ones are going to be people who didn't play the game uh, we'll get into that in a moment for now we're going to focus on the negative uh, this guy's name is literally PS3 fan 2 you know you can rely on an objective uh, opinion on a Nintendo game when his name is PS3 fan 2 he says, fantastic graphics, but everything else is mediocre or outright poor. Go buy Devil May Cry 5 or Bayonetta for a true action game experience. Gameplay is worse than Nier Automata. And you notice how every game he mentions are games that aren't on Switch. You, you know, he doesn't say Bayonetta 2, he says Bayonetta, which, I mean, you can get that on Nintendo platforms, not including Switch, but Devil May Cry 5 isn't, uh, Nier Automata isn't. Notice how all the games he mentioned are games that are conveniently on his preferred platform, um, Again, this doesn't really feel like... Eight. I mean, I'm surprised he gave it a 4 and not a straight-up 0. Must just be a fan of Platinum. Uh, so maybe we got lucky and got a fan of Platinum here. But uh, All right, so I re-ranked all these according to user score just to make it easier to find. I went to the last page. Um, <coughs> Dama underscore Mama. Reset era made me do this. Bunch of little whiny internet juice warriors. So, so people are mad at people being happy about the game. And Reset era came over and did this. Um, this review contains spoilers in other language, hard to really tell. Um, hardcore game fan, another miss from Platinum Games. The combat's very shallow and involves just spamming the same move or simple combo over and over again. Little, however, these games may be shallow, mindless fun. For this game, they decided to bloat the game with a focus on narrative. So this one, I will say, uh, looks like they maybe touched it. Uh, maybe. They could just be looking at it as well. Uh, so this one might be a legit one, but then, you know, a very overrated game. Uh, but he said it was worth 10 bucks, but he gave it a zero. So, again, a, a very hyperbolic uh, user review. Again, th this is not something you'd see a professional ever do. You don't give a game that you think is actually worth some money a zero. Um, the Legend, awful, awful. Do not recommend. The combat's not cool as the trailers made it seem. Characters are boring, uninspired. The controls are hit and miss. Do not buy. This person probably didn't even play the game. Um, this person uh, just goes on and on and on about how much they don't like the game. 
Um, they think it's a cash grab for some reason. You know, it, here's the funny thing. And uh, this game was in development longer than Near Automata was, that a lot of these customers say is be- a better game. So, like, it's definitely not a quick cash grab. Um, uh, here's a complaint about 30 FPS. Oh, because of 30 FPS, it must be bad, right? Like, like they haven't been playing games on the other systems at 30 FPS forever. Uh, let's move on to the, the page four here. We got some even more, you know, of those uh, amazing ratings. Ooh, look at those tens popping in. Uh, let's let's get down to the bottom here, uh, where we're gonna see the rest of the negative reviews. Um, let me see here. Uh, fan, this one literally saying fanboys marketing. So like only Nintendo fanboys are gonna like it. Um, you can really tell that Scalebound being canceled had an effect on this game. Scalebound, a completely different game, had an effect on this game. The graphics are dog hit. I'm trying to say dog, you know what? Um, the gameplay is boring. QTEs just like Bayonetta 2, which it's not cute. I mean, there's some, there are some quick time events in Bayonetta 2, but that's not the brux of the combat. Um, Platinum is really just a washed up old developer. Uh, let's see here. 30 FPS in this day and age, especially for a fast paced action title, trading this piece of crap in. Uh, Astro Chain is the little engine that couldn't become near Automata. It wasn't trying to be near Automata. I don't know if people realize this. It's a brand new IP. It's not trying to be near. Here's the thing Platinum made near. So <laughs> I think they, of all people, know uh, the differences between near Automata and this. Extremely poor. Only good thing about the game are the graphics and nothing else. <laughs> 30 FPS action game. And honestly, there shouldn't be anything else to say. But I can go the extra mile and tell you why I should stay away from it. Or at the very least, dissuade you from paying full price for it. They decided not to let the game speak for itself. We'll flood you with cinematic shots. There's actually a lot of action in the game. So I, uh, if you want a good action game, buy Bayonetta, Near Automata, or, or Metal Gear Rising. This game has no depth. Oh my gosh. This is great. Worse than the Platinum Turtles game. That's saying something. Frame rate is atrocious. They just said the Ninja Turtle game made by Platinum is worse, is better. <laughs> Should have made. We're trying to make a smooth 60. Oh, it used to be good. Um. The game's a mess. It runs at 30 FPS. These 30 FPS comments. Like, fantastic graphics. <laughs> I already read that one, I guess. Oh, man. It's just hilarious. And here's the thing. I don't want to pretend that it doesn't work the other way. And this is why I said it's not just the review bombing. Okay, review bombing is embarrassing. Uh, but it's also the positive reviews. Let, let's just go look at page one. Because... A lot of these 10 out of 10s that are thrown out there are some people are trying to combat the review bombing, uh, but others are just like, they haven't even played the game. See, I'm, I haven't played the game, guys. I can tell you this right now. I'm not leaving a review. I haven't played the game. But, like, simply generation defining. I don't know about that one. This game is so good. Okay, this is might have played it. He's got a bit of a long response. Um... This person, I don't think, has played it either. Said this game's flipping awesome. Combat, gameplay, story are all wacky and over the top ridiculous. Just amazing. Um, I mean, I'm not saying I disagree with the comments, it, but, it, I mean, I, I haven't played the game. So, the, this kind of looks like a, a pretty generic. Stop review bombing. Here you go. Stop review bombing just by a switch, you idiots. Wait, see, the, this game is a 10. This game is a 10. This game, yeah, the, these are just people combating over. And you'll see, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of comments like that. Where people are just um, trying to combat the review bombing. Uh, and again, I, I don't think that is, is what we should be doing. Um, you should only be giving it a 10 if you think the game is worth a 10, not to combat people who are, are trying to say the game is trash. And here's the thing. All it's actually doing is it's helping natural chain. Um, I, you know, I'll, I'll, for, for this viewpoint here, I'll actually give a shout out to my boy player essence. I haven't talked about him in a long time because he put out, um, a video about like the salt is real or whatever, uh, on the same topic with the astral chain. And he mentioned that all these negative review bombings are doing are leading to more videos being made about astral chain. Hello, look what we're talking about. Uh, and giving even more attention to the game and causing more people that were on the fence to buy the game to buy it now. Just because they want to buy it to spite the people uh, that are saying uh, that it's bad. They are saying that they're basically jealous that it's on Switch and not on their preferred platform. And there's no doubt uh, that Astral Chain would be a better game on an Xbox One X or a PlayStation 4 Pro or on PC. Of course it would be. It would probably be at 60 FPS. Uh, it would probably have higher resolutions and all that. But that's not what makes a game great. And I think that's what's so amazing about Astral Chain is it's kind of putting that flag in the mud and it's saying, look, you can have a great 
game that doesn't hit all the ideal performance metrics because performance doesn't in that of itself make a game great it can make a game better but it doesn't make a game great like would this game be 90 plus on a playstation 4 probably in terms of of the even critic ratings because then it would be able to satisfy almost everyone that loves action games because obviously 30 fps i know is going to be jarring for some but play the game experience the intended way the game's meant to be played and you might you know come you might i don't know come to find out that 30 fps isn't as big of a holdback as people think it is because we're not that far removed from every game being 30 fps you playstation 3 fans especially should know about all that 30 fps life out there uh and heck us nintendo fans we even know not every game we play is in 60 uh, breath of the wild one of the best games of all time is 30 fps so uh i honestly think that we are at this point where it's time to start dismissing user reviews if you're not already doing it whether it's the extreme positive end those 10 out of 10s being tossed around i mean there's a lot of 10 out of 10 i mean the 10 out of 10s on national chain are just off the i mean you saw 10 out of the 10s you know here we go you're like 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 you saw 10 out of 10s all the way down onto page four uh before we finally got to anything less than a 10 out of 10 i'm telling you that no no matter how amazing this game is uh, it probably doesn't deserve that many 10 out of 10s from users. Uh, again, they're just trying to combat all the review bombing. And uh, if they weren't doing that, I guess that 7.0 or 7.1, I guess it's gone up a little bit now. That 7.1 that we've seen uh, would maybe be a 6 or something. I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, what matters is uh, what we personally think about the game. And uh, what, what, does that, uh, what, what does that leave for you guys if you're looking for information on Astro Chain? Um, unbiased information. Like maybe you don't want to get it directly from Nintendo and the trailers. You do want some honest opinions. Uh, maybe don't rely on, uh, you know, Metacritic or um, user scores or anything anyways. What I always suggest people do is find that one or two. I suggest multiple because uh, I think one isn't enough. Um, reviewer. Whether they work at IGN or GameSpot, whether they work, uh, you know, Easy Allies as an example, maybe one of their writers, uh, maybe you guys like Jim Sterling and the Jim Pressions, or uh, maybe you're into Spawn Wave and Dreamcast guy or, or, or something, find that one or two people out there whose opinions in general line up with your own. And I know for some of you, that's me. My opinions on gaming uh, line up with some of you guys that watch. That's why you're watching this video. Uh, but I unfortunately don't review games because i don't have the time to review games well i review games uh well I, i've reviewed some games <laughs> well i review a lot more games moving forward it's possible uh but not not anytime soon for reasons i mentioned at the beginning of the video so uh what i will say is find you know those couple people that are planning to review the games that you're maybe interested in uh wait for those reviews to come out whether they're day and date you know or whether they're early or whether they're late wait for the reviews uh and see what they have to say and see if what they're showing and what they're saying and how you personally feel about it. Even if you don't feel exactly the same as that person is reviewing it, you can get a pretty good idea. There's enough information, enough people doing reviews out there uh, to find a couple people that align with your gaming taste uh, and figure out if you want to you know, plop down your 60 bucks on a new game or if you want to wait or if you're going to pass on it entirely. I don't think we need to rely on aggregate sites as awesome as it is. I don't think we need to rely on... Uh, you know, sales numbers. Oh, everybody's buying the game, so you better buy it. Uh, I don't think we need to rely, especially on user reviews. Uh, even you know, even back on. You guys remember the uh, Wii U eShop reviews, and maybe this is why user reviews haven't come back on Switch. Uh, those eShop reviews, every Nintendo game. If you were to believe the eShop reviews, every Nintendo game that released on Wii U, every Nintendo published game was a perfect five out of five. <laughs> like. We know that's not true. Even the best of the best games are probably not a perfect 5 out of 5 on Wii U. But if you were just going to listen to user reviews, of course it was. And where are people most likely to be biased? I mean, on, on the actual platform's user reviews. That's why even the PlayStation Store and, and Xbox three, you know, Xbox One, I've said 360 Store, uh, all the user reviews are extremely positive on all those exclusives because... I mean, that's where your fanboys are at. They literally are on that platform, so they're going to be the ones, you know, pumping those ratings up. So, uh, again, I think user reviews are horrible both directions, both review bombing and uh, fake positive reviews from people who haven't played the game. Uh, I think, obviously, the best way is just to play the game and decide for yourself. Uh, but, you know, if you're deciding if you want to plop your money down, again, find a couple people you trust that are going to review the game uh, and wait for their opinions to come out uh, and wait for them to show their gameplay. 
and then see how you're feeling after that if it's worth spending your money uh i don't think you know that uh, any of these professional or non-professional reviewers you know like youtubers i guess would be considered non-professional ign's kotaku's or whatever be professional i don't think any of them are any better than anything else just find the people that you trust not the outlet the people that you trust uh that align with your feelings and uh Go with that because ultimately I think that's the best way to do it. In fact, you could even reach out to some of those people directly on social media. Like it, as an example, if you like Easy Allies reviews, but the person you like they're reviewing the games isn't the one doing the review of the game you're interested in, well, message the person that you are like that you're, you're 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 you know tweet at them or something that you are interested in their thoughts and ask them. Oftentimes, people like us. We'll just tell you. We'll we'll literally respond to be like, hey, uh, you know, I haven't I haven't played enough to do like, like give you a full a full opinion on it. But here are my thoughts so far, and uh, yeah, I think it's worth a purchase or something. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, for now, uh, everyone that I know personally that's playing Astral Chain loves it. Uh, it's an action game. So if you like action games and you like platinum games, chances are Astral Chain is going to be just up your alley i'm hoping personally that even whether i buy it or not that it sells well enough that we get more of it because i think more of these kind of games should be on switch it looks like it's a high quality product from everything i'm seeing i was hyped from it from the day it was revealed you, know, you guys go back and watch my my reaction to that so uh man uh stay tuned because there's a lot more games coming the rest of this year we have a busy september at the at nintendo prime coming up uh not just in terms of game releases but uh, in terms of news and everything else i can tell you right now september is gonna be packed uh that's when I am back to doing uh, this stuff, I don't want to say full-time, but for you guys, it'll feel like I'm back to doing it full-time uh, with the daily videos and, and all that great stuff, uh, some unique editorial-like videos, uh, maybe maybe some more discussion videos like this one, and then obviously news videos because we're, you know, we're going to keep the news going. Uh, there might be, should I even tell you yet, a much, a much requested uh, video series might be coming back, uh, so stay tuned for that, podcast returning, lots of great stuff. Um, I mentioned before that because I was sick, the podcast was was like canceled. Um, it's actually just been moved. We're actually going to be uh, recording it the same day that it comes out, or, or is supposed to come out anyways. Uh, we'll be recording it on Monday, on Labor Day, uh, Monday night in particular. So it's not it's not going to be uh, available probably till Tuesday at the earliest. But uh, I, it is going to get out, and we are going to get back on our regular schedule. Uh, it's just... Uh, <laughs> Things haven't been lining up with my health uh, one way or another over the past month. I hope you guys can all understand that, especially our patrons. I owe you patrons uh, more than I could ever um, than I can ever pay back to you guys because you guys continue to to hold your support. Those twenty dollar backers continue to stick around patiently waiting uh, for me to get everything back to normal here, both health wise. Uh, if you're looking for a small health update, things are going well. I'm down twenty pounds. Uh, I have you know about. 70 you know 60 ish 70 ish more pounds to go to lose to hit my target to potentially get my blood pressure under control um my heart is uh my, my last test on my heart wasn't the greatest um not as great as the the first after post uh heart attack test was but um we're still working towards that the diet changes are are, are un, in, completely underway and uh I hope to be here doing this for as long as I can with all of you, be there as long as I can for my kids, for my fiance, for the rest of my family. Uh, I love all of you guys, and uh, screw user reviews, man. I'll catch you in the next video.